today we're doing a labioplasty for this patient. Uh, she had children and you can see they left a lot of redundant tissue here at the perineum. This really bothers her every time she works out or rides a bike. So we're fixing this excess tissue so that we make it nice and flat. The way that I like to do my labioplasties is making sure that I don't cut off the blood supply. Most, or not most, but some surgeons will come and just take out the entire lip. Um, I don't like doing that. I like doing what's called a wedge resection or a little pie resection, which is I only take a little, like a little pie shape. So I bring this edge over to this edge. So we kind of trim it that way. And then all this extra tissue here, I'm going to trim away. Okay. So the first thing I do is I want to create symmetry. You can see that this, the labia minora on this side is a little bit smaller than this guy here. And so what I want to do is I want to try to make it as symmetrical as possible. So if you look here, if I were to grab this end and bring this end down here, that would make it a little bit more symmetrical, which means that I have to cut this tissue out. So bring this little top part to this here. And then I have to figure out how I'm going to do this while excising all of this extra tissue. So what I'm doing is I'm marking my triangle that I'm going to cut out. So you can see I've marked the triangle on this side. There's a bottom edge and then I've marked it over here as well. And this is the tissue that I'm going to cut out and then I'm gonna bring this top part to the bottom part there. You can see if I already marked this, you can already tell it looks a little smaller and we're not cutting out a major portion of the labia. The color will stay the same. Sometimes the problem with cutting out the entire labia is you get a, a very drastic change of color. So hopefully at the, at the end, you're not gonna see very much change of color. This here, I'm gonna pull out this way because I want to eventually bring these two pieces together. So I need to mark this area here. We're gonna do a pinpoint in the middle. And then we're gonna fan out to the side. The one thing you don't wanna do is cut out too much because then the tissue ends up in under a lot of tension and it may not heal as nicely as you want it. All right, right here. And I'm going to start with this bottom part first because then I can just trim a little bit more here to make it look nicer. Okay, we're on. So first thing I do is even though the patient is asleep, just for pain control afterwards, I inject a combination of lidocaine and marking, which is a short and a fast acting. Some people actually do these labioplasties in the office. I do them in the office also, just with a local anesthetic as well. So since I'm starting on this area, I'm going to inject this area first. Once I get to the labia, I'll inject the labia. But as you can see, I don't even have to touch this labia over here because this labia is the perfect size. This side first, you can see I'm going to stay superficial. I'm actually going to stay a little bit within my line. Recording? Mm -hmm. So I make my two ends meet. Just, it's basically like de-skinning just the excess tissue on this side. I'm not trying to take out a bunch of that bulge there because as I'm, gonna, I'm going to try to reinforce her anal sphincter since it was not corrected very well at the time of her vaginal delivery. Yep. So I've already taken out this whole posterior part now I'm going to take out this part that's closer to the introitus. And since I've marked, I can see where I want to go.
the nice thing about the um, local anesthetic that I used is that it has epinephrine in it and what that does is it helps with hemostasis so this does not bleed as much. The recovery for this is pretty good. It, I mean, you have to tell patients it's as if they delivered again because it's, it's kind of like an episiotomy site injury. You cannot have sex at least for six weeks until all of this heals. And you have to be very careful with these sutures because they can unravel. There we go. So that's the extra tissue right there. And now what we're going to do is bring these two together so you can see it's not as bulky anymore. And I'll show you guys the end result. Okay, so one thing I wanted to show you is once I took out that tissue, I was able to see that she has a really deep indentation here and her anal sphincter was not corrected properly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to correct this indentation here, bring this strong tissue back together so it kind of, it tightens a little bit the vaginal opening. We don't want to do too much tightening, but we definitely want to take care of this defect here, and that will bring all of this tissue together. And I'll show you guys how that's done. So what I'm doing first is I'm doing what's called hydro dissection. You can see that the tissue, I'm going in the layer between the vagina and the rectum because you have to be very careful if you're making cuts in this area you do not want to get into the rectum so you want to keep those two layers away from each other and this hydrodissection basically helps me separate the layers and again at the same time helping me with hemostasis and pain control the next thing i do is i come in very gently these are called medicine bomb scissors they're very delicate scissors you can see I'm staying very superficial till I get to that area of indentation. I'm just dissecting. And then I make my cut. Perfect. Now you can see where that defect is. Right here. She had a hole right here. We're going to correct that. Yeah. Okay, so right now I'm correcting that hole that was there and reinforcing the tissue bringing the deep muscle layers together. I know it doesn't, the anatomy doesn't look quite as good, but you'll see once I take down this top part here, this is the top part of the vaginal wall. And what I'm doing here is basically imbricating, just trying to get rid of that hernia that she had here and reinforce the stronger tissue so she's got better sphincter, anal sphincter control. So as you can see, I've already trimmed the excess vaginal uh, mucosa. I corrected that indentation, and now I'm just going to bring the vaginal mucosa together, bring this together, and you can see already all that excess tissue is gone. And then I'll take care of the labia, and we're done. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can see now all the excess tissue is now gone, and this is her labia on this side. Now we're going to resect all this excess tissue here. So I've already made my incision, and now I'm basically just taking this top tissue off. Perfect. So the first thing I do is I bring the two ends that I want to stitch together. So it's this little guy to that end there. And we want to do a nice suture so it keeps it off of tension. This is the most important suture here because you don't want this to dissolve too early. And you want that blood supply to be very good. So that's the first step, is just bringing those two ends together. And already you can see that the lip on this side matches the lip on that side. It's much smaller, 
then I will suture the inside and the outside here to close up the hole. Okay, so you guys can see we already we're done with the repair. This is the labia on the left side and this is the labia on the right side. And we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison. But you can see now they're much more symmetric. The, the skin color has stayed the same. And, I, and we also took off all of that excess tissue that she had here. So it looks a little bit more normal. And she's gonna heal very nicely. I'll show you guys her progress when she comes to my office.